Good afternoon, I'm Milton Walker with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Police Federation is awaiting a response from the Ministry of Finance following an ultimatum issued yesterday demanded the halt of the planned payment of retroactive salaries to public sector workers at the end of the month. The Federation is upset that the government will be doing so while wage negotiations are ongoing. The ultimatum was issued in a letter addressed to State Minister in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, Roddy Spencer, and copied to the Finance Minister, Audley Shaw. The development was revealed in a voice note sent to the rank-and-file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force following yesterday's meeting at the Ministry. The meeting ended in a stalemate. Director of Public Relations for the Police Federation, Corporal Arlie McFarlane, in the voice note accused the government of treating rank-and-file members with disrespect and draconianism. And I can tell you that we will not let go of this one, rank and file members. We will not let go of this one. Just today, our attorney wrote to Minister Spencer and made a special request for an immediate retraction of the intention to pay that 5% and must respond of the intention for that retraction by tomorrow, Thursday, the 15th of March. Public sector teachers are back on the job today after three days of industrial action. This follows yesterday's emergency conciliation meeting with the Jamaica Teachers Association and the Finance Ministry held at the Ministry of Labour. The decision was made to scrap plans to pay the teachers retroactive salaries this month. The police have confirmed that two persons were shot, one fatally, within the zone of special operations in Denham Town, Kingston last night. The deceased has been identified as 21-year-old Dylan Martin, otherwise called Dillyman, from Golden Heights. The police were on mobile patrol in the area sometime after 10.30 when they heard explosions. They were directed to a building in the vicinity of Racecoast Lane and Regent Street. Mr. Martin and another man were found lying with bullet wounds. Mr. Martin, who had bullet wounds to the head, was pronounced dead at hospital. The other man has been admitted in stable condition. Residents of Port Antonio, St. Mary, took to the streets this morning to stage a protest over the lockup of a man whom they believe was framed for killing a three-year-old girl two weeks ago. The angry residents blocked several roadways to vent their anger and frustration regarding the incident. Some residents recall the day the three-year-old was killed. We did that sit down. But three seconds after me say that the back more come and say, man down there say shoot off fire, my boss, be a wild shot. You see me? In which way I mean I see all comes a man could have shoot off fire. In a no way, a man could have shoot off for you and a walk your walk come, you know, run past. Same time, the mother come now and turn to him and say, What happened? And he must say, No boy, them don't let her shoot off for me. And he must say, Who me baby there? He said, Baby don't let her. Who me baby there? He baby don't let her. That's all. They claim the man responsible for the killing is still at large. A call has been made for a thorough probe into the allegation of political interference at the Electoral Office of Jamaica, the EOJ. The claim was made by Director of Elections, Art Fisher, who has announced it was made in relation to the resignation of Art Fisher, who resigned yesterday. National Integrity Action, NIA, says the matter is extremely serious and warrants a detailed investigation. NIA Executive Director Professor Trevor Munro zeroed in on reports that Mr. Fisher and the EOJ came under pressure from a member of the Electoral Commission of Jamaica. He says the selected members of the commission need to act immediately. If found to have substance, then all Jamaica has to speak out, stand up, and demand an end to this growing political influence on an institution which is the very foundation of Jamaica's democratic governance. Billions, that's how much the country could lose if serious measures are not put in place to address the risks of non-communicable and communicable diseases urgently. 
More in this report from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. The health ministry is reporting that the economy could lose significantly if the issue of communicable and non-communicable diseases are not looked at. The ministry says from analysis over the past five decades, NCDs have become a serious threat. And with the government's plan of Vision 2030, targets could be seriously impacted if the issue is not addressed. In a recent study conducted by Harvard University, it was estimated that if we continue um, with business as usual, meaning doing nothing about our NCD situation, Jamaica could lose up to 17.2 billion, sorry, billion US dollars over the period 2015 to 2030. This is, this last, ladies and gentlemen, is in gross domestic product. But according to Director of Planning, Policy and Development in the Ministry of Health, Howard Lynch, that's not the only issue that will affect the country. He noted that there are persons who are present at work but not adding to the bottom line of a company due to ill health. He says in the long run, this will hurt the economy. According to the Center for Mental Health, um, in 2011 it was estimated that presenteeism driven by mental health um, driven by mental ill health cost the UK economy 15 billion pounds per year. Well, we don't know how much it cost us here. Uh, maybe that's something we need to, to look into. A study carried out by the World Health Organization, WHO, showed that globally the rate of death due to non-communicable diseases is at 63%. These NCDs are mainly cerebrovascular diseases, which account for 48% of the the, the deaths, cancers, 21%, chronic respiratory disease, 12%, and diabetes, um, accounting for 3.5%. Dr. Lynch noted, however, that Jamaicans need to do much more to address their health situation. We need to focus on addressing obesity, physical inactivity, and the harmful use of alcohol, tobacco use, and unhealthy diet. It is well known, ladies and gentlemen, that um, organizations that invest not only in the safety of their employees, but also their overall health and wellness by implementing workplace wellness programs, enjoy significant benefits, including reduced employee absenteeism, increased levels of employee productivity, employee satisfaction, and also reduced health care costs. Oshade Masters. TVJ News. Business operators in Mandeville have requested three months to sort out the haphazard manner in which deliver trucks unload goods at their business places. Mayor of Mandeville Donovan Mitchell, who has raised the concern at a recent meeting of the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, said that parked delivery trucks along Manchester and South Racecourse roads were creating serious traffic congestion. Mr. Mitchell subsequently met with business owners who have requested more time to meet along, among themselves and agree on designated delivery times to solve the problem. We're not going to just rush into it. We're going to be calling the business people, especially those on Manchester Road, Park Crescent and South Race Coast Road to a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce to say, listen me, there are going to be specific times that you can do the delivery. I hate to see five, four trucks on the roadside backing up delivering, go delivering goods while motorists are waiting, people can't pass to go about their businesses. So we are going to be regulating that. Mayor Mitchell also spoke about plans to correct the long-standing flooding problem along Ward Avenue in the town. The second phase of getting Ward Avenue and becoming our first business improvement efforts that will be taking the water off Ward Avenue onto two private premises that we are signing an MOU for. And so after that is done, we'll be paving Ward Avenue and doing the other rest of things so that the businesses on Ward Avenue can enjoy having persons come into their business places without wondering whether or not it's going to be falling, rain is going to be falling heavily or not. In news overseas, dozens of students gathered at Arizona's state capitol Wednesday as part of a nationwide protest against gun violence. They didn't get all the meetings they wanted, but they definitely left an impact on some lawmakers. My shirt says am I next and it has a bolt wound in the corner. In a show of unity, dozens of students descended on the Arizona State Capitol to make a point about gun violence. On the back of my shirt it says let us write college apps not wills. The students made t-shirts and wrote messages to lawmakers. Democrats later read their notes on the House floor. I want to thank you all for being here. 
for your courage. The goal of the protest? To urge legislators to pass stricter gun control laws. It has to stop now. And when does it stop? When is the change going to happen? And I say it's now because I'm not going down without a fight. House Speaker J.D. Mesnard says some of the students' demands could be met. We definitely need to uh, create a process where law enforcement, family members, those who suspect uh, folks are imminently violent can intervene, uh, not violate their due process, but maybe shortcut it a bit. Students then headed upstairs, straight to the governor's office. He wasn't there, so students waited for nearly two hours, demanding a meeting with him, but that never happened. I feel disappointed, a little silenced. Although it's very discouraging, I feel empowered in a way because I know that we're going to get somewhere. I have that feeling in my gut. In sports, the West Indies suffered their first defeat of the ICC World Cup qualifiers, going down three wickets to Afghanistan in their Super Sixes opener in Harare. Batting first, the West Indies batsmen struggled against the Afghan bowlers before being restricted for 197 for eight from their 50 overs. Shai Hope, 43, and Marlon Samuels, 36, were the top scorers for the West Indies against Mujid Rahman, 3 for 33, and Mohamed Nabi, 2 for 43. In reply, Afghanistan reached their target at 198 for 7, thanks to 68 from Rahmat Shah and 31 from Mohammed Nabi. Jason Holder had 3 for 39, while debutant Kimo Paul claimed 2 for 29. The defeat sees the West Indies relinquishing their top spot to Scotland, who defeated the United Arab Emirates by 73 runs. Still in sports, the level 6 to 10 junior development gymnastics team returned to Jamaica on Monday after competing at the Gymnics International in Montreal, Canada. This is one of the largest meets in this region and attracts teams from over 115 clubs and over 25 countries. Renata Brown reports. It's a site that goes beyond their recognition as a minor sport in Jamaica, but it seems more often than not the country's gymnastics team delivers whenever they go on overseas assignments. Well, it's definitely the hard work that they have put in. They, these girls train very hard. They work out um, at least four hours in the gym each day and you can see it in their performance and their execution. Two of those ladies are Jamila Duffus and Chrisanya Brissett. Duffus finished 14th of 34 competitors in level seven, but the experience in itself had lessons. So what I experienced was that the competition was very hard and the children over there were, they were good, like really good. And the warm up session was a bit weird because we had to like, warm up in a different gym and then compete in another one so the equipments were different. For Brissett, it was just a fulfilling feeling just to be competing in Canada. It was good. Um, I got a ribbon because I did really well and I danced a lot and I like dancing. Nadine White was the coach in charge of the levels 1 through to 5. Level 1, they place gold medal all round. Level 1, 2, 3, gold medal all round. Level 4 and 5, it was a bit challenging for them, but they came out on top. As you can see, Christiane Brissett and Talisa Robinson came out of bands. They came out on top very good. And, and Emilia, yes, Emilia Shaw, they are also level 3, level 4, Christiane Brissett level 5. And they did extremely well. They did their best. President Nicole Grant Brown says it wasn't by mistake that the team decided to compete in Canada as it helps the team to understand what it takes to perform at that level. Renata Brown for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for primetime news on behalf of the news, sports and production teams. Good afternoon.